Uh... Right, I've had enough. I'm over it. It's only been about a week or so since you last saw me, but that flashing immobiliser bulb that I've had to look at ever since fitting the standalone ECU to this car, it has got to come out. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this episode. It shouldn't take me too long. I'm hoping all I need is this Phillips head screwdriver, and the best thing, it won't cost me anything. Win, win. So this flashing immobiliser bulb symptom is perfectly normal. Apparently it's just what happens when you fit a standalone ECU like the ME221 to this car, but it's something I am not prepared to live with, especially this time of year when most of my driving is in the dark, which only makes it more of a distraction. So to fix it, I am planning to expose the gauge cluster in this car and yank the bulb. Simple. It should be, anyway. Let's do it. All right, to expose the gauge panel in this car, obviously I've got to remove some of these dash panels first. And I'm gonna start off with the column trim. So that's this thing here. Now this is held in place by three Phillips head screws underneath, so I'm gonna remove those. And then hopefully this thing should just separate into its two halves and be removed. Three screws out, once again, don't forget to keep them somewhere safe. And thank you Mazda. Okay, I've removed the top half. The bottom half is just snagging on the ignition barrel a little bit, but it doesn't matter. I don't think I need to remove that bottom half anyway. So top half's off, as you can see, it was just held on by these little clips. It just pulled off pretty easily. So now that's off, I can focus on getting this piece of trim here that surrounds the gauge panel off. Now I think this is called the binnacle. Maybe, you can correct me if I'm wrong. So this is basically, as always, clipped into place. So to remove it, it needs a good sharp pull towards me. Now, the difficult part of this is getting enough purchase on this thing. So I think I'm gonna try grab it on these bottom corners here. Uh, I might have to get a rag or something so I can get a tighter grip on it. And with a good pull, it should pull out of here and hopefully not break in the process. Well, we've got a couple of clips released there. I think there's a few more up top that need doing. Bloody hell. I have to summon my inner Hulk here. Oh, I think she's gone. The question is, did I break it? No. Amazing. So you can see underneath there, five clips. One, two, three, four, five. That's what was holding that in there pretty tightly as well. Right, now we've got the barnacle out. You can see I've exposed the gauge cluster here. Now my big question at this point is, have I got enough access down the back here to get my fingers in to remove this bulb? But first glance, it doesn't look like it. It is pretty tight. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is loosen this gauge cluster and pull it forward a little bit. So thankfully that's pretty easy because it's just held in place again by four Phillips head screws. So I'm just gonna back these out pull the gauge cluster forward and then hopefully I'll have enough room to reach my hand down the back and get that bulb out of there. Right, I've got three of these screws out. This fourth one down here, hard to get to with this screwdriver I've got. What I really need is one of those stubby screwdrivers, but I don't have one. So, improvisation time. I lied, I did have one. Fourth one out. Now, this gauge cluster should be loose, so I should be able to pull it out towards me. And there we go. Now, I definitely should have enough access to get this bulb out now. So it's this bulb here up on the top right, as I'm looking at it from the front or from the back, it's the top left. Now, these things just pull out like a regular house bulb. You just twist and pull. So. Give me two minutes, I should have this thing out. Mission accomplished. 
That is quite satisfying, let me tell you. So now I just need to reverse the entire process and put everything back together. So that's the gauge cluster back in. Now just a quick pointer, if any of you were wanting to remove the cluster entirely, all you'd have to do extra to what I've done here is remove the electrical connectors at the back of the gauge panel here. Now, this is an entirely digital dash, so there's no mechanical connections. So if you pop those three connectors out, that whole lot will come out and then you are free to do what you want with it. I'm assuming if you're gonna do it, you're gonna swap the back of the gauges into something a bit more fancy, but that's all you'd have to do to get that out extra to what I've done here. So a short but sweet episode this time around but it's done a lot for my sanity let me tell you because driving to work at five o'clock in the morning with that bulb flashing in my face was kind of annoying I'll be honest and it's just one of those things that should you want to fit a standalone ECU to your car that you're probably going to have to deal with whether you expected to or not I didn't I have to say but thankfully the solution to this problem has been quite simple so that's it for another episode now going forward I'm hoping to move away from these ECU based episodes and move on to fitting some parts because I've got an aluminium radiator sat in the back of the truck over there that needs to be fitted and then I've got to think about the supercharger as well which needs a service and I want to fit a reduction pulley to it as well and that's all before it goes in the engine bay of this car so that's what's coming up in these future episodes don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with this build which if you don't know by now is supercharging this MX-5. Thanks, see you for the next episode.